everyone, Liam Cosgrove with the Gray Zone here. I'm heading back at the airport from the GOP debate in Milwaukee. All the candidates were up there with the exception of Donald Trump. And all the candidates were quite hawkish on foreign policy with the exception of uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. So take a look at some of the responses they gave. And afterwards, I'll show you some of the follow-ups that I was able to get from the candidates themselves. Vivek, if we do the giveaway that you want to give to Putin to give him his land, it's not going to be too long before he rolls across a NATO border. And frankly, our men and women of our armed forces are going to have to go and fight him. I want to let the Ukrainians fight and drive Putin an and the flag. Russians back out I into I Russia. I want to just briefly address. And if we cut and run on Ukraine, uh, the next uh, fight is going to be in Taiwan. And there, it's not going to be us just supplying weapons. It's going to be um, American men and women who are going to be sent three quarters of the way around the world uh, to fight there. A win for Russia is a win for China. We have to know that Ukraine is the first line of defense for us. So now we've got Mike Pence. I caught up with uh, Mike Pence backstage and asked him about whether he would commit U.S. troops to Taiwan in the event of an invasion by China. I also asked him about Ukraine. As you'll see, he answers my first question. And then three separate times I tried to go up to him and, uh, and, and ask him follow-ups and he would not, he would not give me an answer, um, despite my initial outreach being quite polite and, um, and fair. Uh, you'll see him responding to another reporter about Ukraine, but then refuses to answer my question about the nuclear risks. Take a look. Mr. Vice President, would you commit U.S. troops to a war in Taiwan? America is the leader of the free world. I'd, I'd promote policies that uh, would be an effective deterrent so we never have to answer that question. Mr. Vice President? i got to get him in. If we were to let Putin overrun Ukraine, it would only be a matter of time before he crossed the border that we'd have to fight him. And I hold to the view that uh, if a country is willing to fight the enemies of this country. Let's give them the means to fight them there so we don't have to fight. What about the nuclear risk? What about the nuclear risk of Ukraine, Mike Pence? You, you, you treated some words with Vivek Ramaswamy tonight. Why? Mr. Vice President, what is the end game in Ukraine? Now we'll go to Chris Christie. Uh, I caught Chris Christie during a commercial break just right on the edge of the debate stage. And I asked him about um, committing U.S. troops to Taiwan as well because he's actually given interviews on cable news where he he has already um, committed U.S. troops to Taiwan. So he would engage in a direct hot war with China if Taiwan were invaded. So I, I tried to get, you know, ask him about uh, the nuclear risks of that. You know, I mean, that that would be the first time in history that two nuclear powers enter into a direct conflict with one another. Um, and as you'll see, he also refused uh, to answer my question, basically. Governor Christie, yeah. why do you want to commit U.S. troops to a war in Taiwan? I'm not doing interviews right now. I'm in the middle of a, of a debate. Oh, How are you? Simple question. Simple question, Christie. Just support your I couldn't agree. I'm so happy to see you here tonight. Why do you want a hot war with China? Are you worried about World War III? Do you really think that's appropriate? You know, I don't know. That was really ominous. Chris Christie. <laughs> it does look pretty wild, right? Governor. Good to meet you. Governor. Lastly, we got Ron DeSantis, Florida governor. I caught him on his way out as he was getting into his SUV and asked him politely if I could ask him a question, which he agreed to. But as you'll see, his staff quickly ushered me out and said, that's not going to happen. So you hate to see it. Can I ask you one question before you go? We got to go. I'm so sorry. So we're just not going to have time. I'm sorry. What? He I said if it's good. He said if it's good, he's got to hear it out. We, we got to go. Where's the chase? Lon, where is the chase? Right outside. Are you coming, Brian? You know, overall, um, the the kind of impression I get from from the way these candidates respond is that none of them really like to have their views, you know, pressed and and held up to scrutiny. Um, None of them really want to engage in real debates. They prefer these 30 second kind of um, sanitized talking point sessions. Um, I will say, and I can say personally, I've been in, in touch with Vivek Ramaswamy's team for a while trying to um, organize debates. And I've also been in touch with the teams of a lot of these GOP uh, candidates pr prior to this debate. And I will say, whatever you think of Vivek Ramaswamy, um, he has, he and his team have been totally open to debate anybody 
and he is willing to have his views challenged um, and, and make his arguments in the public square, whereas the rest of them are, are simply not. And so I, I do have to say I give him a little respect for that. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I hope I hope these guys agree to longer form debates, longer form interviews where they're actually getting down to the substance of their policies and not these ridiculous talking points that you see, um, you know, in this debate. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching and hope to get you guys more content soon.